All right, children and teens in the U.S. now get more than two-thirds of their calories from ultra-processed foods. An analysis of almost two decades' worth of data has found. Jonathan Baylor is the executive producer of the new food documentary, Better. So, Jonathan, explain ultra-processed, because we know what, well, we thought we knew what processed foods were, but are they all ultra-processed? They're not, and this is really the critical distinction. I think so many of us can sometimes feel paralyzed with we're not doing good enough for our children. We need to buy expensive premium foods, and if we can't do that, you know, we just throw our hands up because it seems overwhelming. But what this study is showing us, <clears throat> excuse me, is that two thirds of our children's calories are coming from ultra processed foods. So these are things like Cheetos. Pop-Tarts, I mean, things that we all recognize are chemicals that contain calories that kill us over time. And that's why our kids have a shorter life expectancy than us, unfortunately. So those ultra-processed foods coupled with a pandemic, that can't be good. So what's happening to the kids who are eating them? What we're seeing is these quote-unquote foods should really be compared more to cigarettes in the sense that the long-term damage they cause to us, again, this is not about eating too many calories. This is about mass chemical intake of unregulated substances into our children. And we have to do better because, again, as I mentioned, this is the first generation of children expected to live shorter lives than their parents, and we can do better than that. Well, let's talk about parents because they're they're kind of stretched past their breaking points in a lot of cases. They're trying to work from home or go back to work or they lost their jobs in the pandemic and now they're working too or whatever. How can they make sure that kids are eating better without going the, you know, the whole foods or whole paycheck route uh, for, you know, only organic vegetables, et cetera? Well, there's really two things we can do here. One is as you mentioned earlier, we just released a film with the Harvard Medical School called Better, and the film is not called Perfect for a reason. We're talking about two-thirds of our calories coming from ultra-processed foods. Look, frozen vegetables, canned green beans, canned tuna fish, these minimally processed foods, frankly, could be the salvation of this generation of children because we are crunched for time, and we do have food deserts, but we do have solutions in these minimally processed foods. And then two, we've seen that our country can do miraculous things. I mean, look at what we've done with the vaccine for the COVID pandemic. If we treated this as the pandemic that it was, we as a country could do with this just what we did with smoking in children, which is to show a precipitous decline in just a few years. If we can get our government and our policymakers all aligned on the importance of the health of our children. So why is it so hard to get government and policymakers aligned on, you know, decent food for kids? Unfortunately, it is a fact that the same companies who produce cigarettes are the companies manufacturing these ultra-processed foods. This is not a conspiracy. Kraft General Foods are owned by the same company that owns Philip Morris. It's just a fact. But we've been brainwashed that if we can just keep our kids active, these quote-unquote foods don't harm them, but they're not food. That's like saying that it's okay for your kids to smoke if they just go for a jog afterwards. That's not the way chemicals work. This isn't food. These are calories with chemicals. Jonathan Baylor, executive producer of the new food documentary, Better, and we appreciate the time and the information. Thank you so much. Thank you.